I am Anil Kumar and in this video we will try to understand the concept to find the resultant forces. Let us take an example. Let us consider two forces F1 along horizontal of 40 newtons and F2 at an angle of 45 degrees to F1. So what we are considering here are two forces which are F1 and F2. F1 is along the horizontal, let's say this is F1. This force is of 14 newtons. And then we have another force which is acting at 45 degrees to F1. We are calling it F2. So 45 degrees, slightly smaller. So let me make this line at 45 degrees and that is 10 newtons. So these are the two forces acting on a body in free space, let us say. And there are no friction forces, no other forces. Right? So let's say they are acting on a body in free space. So they can, the resultant can be uh, anywhere, right? Now, we need to find the resultant of these forces. To find the resultant, we can adopt one of the two methods. One of them is to make a triangle and the other one is to resolve these forces along x and y axis. So these are two standard ways of solving such questions, right? So, so we'll kind of do both of them in this particular video. So, uh, okay, let's resolve these forces and see what the resultant is. And then we'll find the resultant force and also the, that gives you the magnitude and also direction between the resultant and let's say the horizontal one okay so what I'll do here is that I'll resolve these forces along X and Y plane so what you notice here is that 14 newtons is horizontal force and therefore the whole force will be along the X axis so we have 14 newtons here however 10 newtons force which is at 45 degrees can be resolved into two components one of these components will be along the 14 newton force the other one will be at right angles correct how much is that component let us figure this out since the angle between these two forces is 45 degrees the component which is horizontal, let me call this as F2x, the horizontal component along the x-axis will be equals to 14 cos theta, 10 sorry, 10 cos theta, 10 cos theta, theta is 45 degrees, 45 degrees. You can always use the calculator, find its value. 10 cos of 45 degrees equals to we'll write a decimal equivalent right so it'll be easy to calculate 7.07 .07. okay the vertical component of this force is going to be f2y and that is going to be 10 sine 45 degrees and that should also be 7.07 .07. let's see 10 sine of 45 degrees is 5 square root 2, 7.07. .07. The angle is such, right? So, okay, 7.07 .07 newtons. So, that brings to these two forces. So, so the net force along the x is how much now? So, because of this 10 newtons, we have additional 7.07 .07 newtons along the x-axis and along the y-axis the force is 7.07 .07 newtons is it okay this is along the y force so if you see the net force along the x direction is this is 14 and then we have this 7.07 .07, right add it up and we have a vertical force here which is 7.07 .07. 
clearly the resultant of this force is from here to there so that is the resultant force we need to find this resultant force and also the angle theta which this resultant makes with the horizontal force right so if i add these two what do i get uh, 14 plus 7.07 .07, right 21.07 and this is 7.07 .07, correct so that becomes our diagram to represent this combination of forces now you can always find this resultant using pythagorean theorem this is right angle triangle correct now so we can write r as equal to square root of so that's the magnitude of r so let me write this as magnitude right as square root of 21.07 square plus 7.07 .07 square perfect so let's find it out so we have square root of let's put them in brackets so it's not really required 0 7 square and then we have plus 7.07 .07 square right and then we say equal to so it gives us a resultant of 22 point let's say 2 okay, newtons so that is the magnitude of this resultant r to find the angle theta we know tan theta is this right so theta is tan inverse of opposite side which is 7.07 .07, divided by adjacent which is 21.07 right so we can find the angle so which is tan inverse so tan inverse of 7.07 .07 divided by 21.07 bracket close equals 2 so we get an angle of around 18.5 degrees between them right so this calculation clearly gives you how to find the resultant using this coordinate systems once you split them into into their components right into their components so that that is the answer is the resultant r has is 22.2 newtons at 18.5 degrees with horizontal f1 force is it okay because f1 is along the horizontal so that becomes our answer so that is one approach which you could adopt to answer these questions the other one is talking about triangles right so let's try to get this answer using the triangles so let me use the space here to find that solution so what you have here is two forces so let's make a triangle with these forces so first one is 14 newtons let's say let me draw it here 14 newtons right the other one at 45 degrees is 10 newtons okay now this is not to the scale this is just an approximate diagram while it is important to understand how we took this so whenever you make a triangle you have to put tail on the head right and this angle is known to us as 45 degrees in this triangle right this is 45 degrees okay now the resultant is is this force we'll call this as r right this we know is 14 newtons and this one is 10 correct that becomes the triangle we need to find r and the angle theta from this triangle now since we know two sides and the angle between them this angle is known to us how much is that 180 minus 45 correct this angle is known to us so this angle let's call this phi so angle phi is equals to 180 degrees minus 45 degrees it is important to note that the angle is 180 minus 45 as you can clearly see from here right 135 degrees now you can apply the cosine law to find r right so so we get r square equals to sum of squares so these numbers 14 square plus 10 square minus 2 times 14 times 10 times cos of the angle which is 135 degrees correct 
and then we'll square root this to find r. Okay, so that number here is 14 square plus 10 square minus 2 times 14 times 10 times cos of 135 degrees and that gives you 493.98. So let me write this as r square equals to 493.99 let us say 989 and that gives you r is square root of this right r is square root of let's say 494 which is how much but i'll do square root of the number which i have here of the answer equals to 22.22 right so we get exactly the same answer do you see that we get exactly the same answer r as 22.2 perfect. To find the angle theta, you can use sine law. So whenever you are doing triangles, you have to use sine law and cosine law to solve the equation, right? Now, to get this angle, we know the side opposite. So we will write this as sine theta over the opposite side, which is 10 equals to, and here we know the angle uh, I mean this angle is 135 degrees correct so we know that angle so we'll write to sine of the angle which is 135 degrees divided by the side which we just calculated 22.22 okay now from here what is theta equals to so theta in degrees equals to 10 times let me extend this I have less space here so I'll just kind of extend this okay okay and let me also push this page a bit perfect so it is 10 times sine 35 degrees 135 degrees divided by 22.22 is it okay so let's do this so theta is i'm sorry i should have written sine inverse okay sine inverse of all this okay sine inverse of all this okay so let's do sine inverse of shift sine inverse so we have uh, so it could be 10 uh, times this to first let's divide 10 by 22.22 right and then we'll multiply this by sine of 135 135 close the bracket equals to so it gives us same angle 18.55 do you see that so the resultant is 18.5 degrees. So either method you adopt, you get the same answer. But I hope with this, you understand that if you are given some forces, how to find their resultant forces. So basically, there are two methods which could be adopted. One of them is triangle law of forces. The other one is considering their components. And both always will result into same answer right now this question we did when both these were free vectors in space right now at times you could have some real life situations so let me just modify this question and let us say and this is a question for you and let us say that this time we have on the ground let's say this is the ground for us okay now on this ground we have let's say this ground is snow and we have a sledge here so there is no friction between the two and we are act one force is acting in this direction and the other force is not pulling but it is like pushing right so the other force is is kind of pushing so it could be pushing in that direction or this direction so let us say it is pushing like this so these are the two forces acting right let's say this is the force acting so I'm taking a special case for you now and let us say this angle between them is 45 degrees now can you find the resultant remember one thing that in this particular case when you are pushing this object right if you resolve into components then this particular force which is a push has two components and the components magnitude is same right these are the two components while pushing the component which is towards the ground 
will not help you really right so the only component which helps you is which is along the ground in this direction right so that adds up so in this case the resultant force will be how much can you tell me if it is on the ground and you're pushing it like this then the resultant will be 14 plus the force along this direction which we calculated as 7.07 .07, right so it will be 22.2 newtons 22.2 newtons along the horizontal direction do you see that much force so in case we change the scenario and we say there is a sledge on snow this is like sledge and snow so we are really saying that there is no friction okay basically okay and we are pushing that's the ground you cannot push this sledge under the ground right so it just moves horizontally that's the only free side for the object to move right so it's not a free space that's what we're trying to say in that case the resultant will be only the horizontal components work the vertical components is of no use you can't be pushing it against a wall so that becomes the answer right so that becomes a special case when you consider one to be a pull the other one to be a push i'm anil kumar and i hope that helps thank you and all the best